What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Make sure you click this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now we're down here at a private golf course and we've got a water intake or a water pump system that comes up into a fountain that's not working. And if you can't tell, it is extremely cold today. It is a blazing cold day. The wind's just blazing right now. And I'll go ahead and tell you, we're about to freeze to death and we ain't even gotten the water yet. But we gotta go out here and see what's wrong with this pump, maybe get it unentangled, and then uninstall it or basically bring it up to the service to get it pulled out so it can get serviced. And we'll probably have to reinstall it as well. We've got a lot of work to get done today. Hopefully you guys will get to see something. Looks like the visibility may be pretty decent, but we're gonna jump in, do a quick inspection, and then see if we can get this thing pulled out for the owners. So now that we're finally ready to do the job, basically what we've got to do is swim out these power cables here and try to find out where they're entangled at. The pump system or the fountain system, the crew had actually tried to pull in to shore and it just got stuck. They couldn't pull it no harder. And so they've got to get it in to determine what's the matter with it to see how they can fix it to get it operating again but what we've got to do is figure out what it's entangled in so as we descend under the water here you can tell right away the visibility is basically zero the lights that we're using are very very powerful lights and unfortunately sometimes in visibility like this you don't want a powerful light uh, i think the one that i'm using is between 2400 and maybe 2700 looms uh, plus i've got two 800 looms on my helmet um, and then of course the other diver has two video lights on his helmet he too has a 20 some hundred loom light uh, and it's really not doing anything for us but the good news is as far as navigation out to the fountain and to determine what the power cables are entangled in, we just simply use the cable. So I'm just swimming along, pulling myself along the cable. Uh, every now and then you may actually see the cable. If it gets entangled in something, I can stop for a second and actually work my way through that entanglement. Um, I know we came across some type of concrete structure down there that had rebarb coming up out of it. And the cables were actually going through the rebarb where the rebarb had been over. And it's actually this part right here. Um, the cables were going through a loop section of the rebar. So we had to kind of unlodge them out of that and then we could continue on. There were several other entanglements we came across. We come across some type of metal cage system um, and we were, the cables had actually wrapped around it too. So as the crew was trying to pull the system in, just the harder they pulled, the tighter it was getting entangled. But we're untang basically that's what we were hired to do is unentangle it and get it back over to shore for them. But we're working our way on out. Once again, it's kind of like doing it with your eyes shut because that's basically what it was to us was doing it with our eyes shut we had zero visibility on this day um even with us being side by side i could see my lights as you can see here on the camera but i couldn't see my, my dive buddy's light so 
that light right there is about a 2700 lumen light and it's just nothing here's the actual metal cage that we came across that the power cable was actually wrapped around um, and I'm not sure what this was we were not able to determine whether this is an extra drain and maybe that cage was some type of grate to go over the drain or if it was some other type of structure in there that we're just not aware of uh, we didn't get to actually talk to the property owner on this particular job we were hired by the uh, service crew that works on pumps and fountains and sprinkler heads and things like that so we didn't actually get to talk to the owner to determine what that thing uh, actually was there you can see my die buddy he's just coming along we're still trying to unentangle the uh, power cables there um, you can kind of see the structure once again every time we come across something we kind of do a quick uh, inspection the best we can there you can see the power cables are coming up but we try to do a quick inspection just so that we're not entangling ourselves or that we're damaging anything so we're just taking our time we're unentangling the cables and then continuing on out to the fountain system um, now unfortunately we didn't have a uh, drawing of the fountain system so we really didn't know what we were going to come across all that we knew is is that the fountain had been connected to four different water pumps which you'll see later they're really not that big pumps this was actually a, a free floating um, fountain system and it was being anchored down by just two ropes that went down to the bottom and was tied off to rebar to keep it from floating away and it just kept it one spot and the pumps themselves which you'll see at the bottom once we get it up the pumps were just four standard water pumps um but it was really unique because we thought this thing went all the way to the bottom so as we're following this cable down i think we hit a maximum depth of about 12 feet all of a sudden that cable just kind of veers straight up and we're like, well, this can't be right because the pumps are usually on the bottom. But with it free floating the way it was, as the water raises or the water goes down, the pump's going to go with it, which was a pretty cool feature. Plus, it kept this pump out of the silt, too. So there's no silt or sediment getting sucked up into it. Um, so that was a cool little feature about this pump. But we're still also trying to determine uh, what's or why it's not working, which you'll see at the end of the video why it didn't work. Um, but here we're we should be getting close to the end here um a lot of times when we do these jobs they're they're not glamorous it's swimming out here in a bunch of muck and seeing if we can unentangle something or uninstall something a lot of times we'll have to disassemble something underwater and bring it up and it's all by feel uh, which is what we're doing here every now and then you'll see the the power cables but basically we're just swimming out across the power cables that's all we're doing here uh, but we should be getting close to the end here. I think I'm starting to make my ascent here. Uh, we should start to get a little bit better vis or at least uh, an ambient light coming in from the surface. Um, like I say, we're at about 12 feet. We take our time when we do this. This is not uh, just a rush through type thing. Um, we just take our time, make sure we're safe, and uh, try to fix what we can fix. But here we're starting to get a little bit of ambient light coming in from the surface, so we are headed back up. Um, and I think this was our last entanglement too because the rebarbs down at the bottom where the rope was tying the pump off to to keep it from drifting away the power cables had actually looped around that so we had to cut one of the ropes off to begin with and then as we start to come up we can pull the power uh, cable up with us which you should see here in just a second you'll see both of my hands come up and you'll see the power cables as we ascend and then of course uh, we pop up to the surface we cut the last rope on the uh, fountain itself and then of course we're able to swim it into shore and then we got the daunting task of actually getting it out of the water because this thing was actually extremely heavy um, but here we're coming up there you can see the power cables and you should see the pumps temporarily and then I should pop out of the water and you will actually see the fountain itself
there's your problem. Muskrats. You can see their tooth marks. That's why their thing wasn't working. All muskrats. See their tooth marks. Muskrats ate it. Take it all the way down. All right guys, so we just got finished up, got out of the water, and I gotta be honest with you, it's a whole lot warmer down there in the water than it is out here today. It is really, really cold, but the water is only 55 degrees, so the water actually wasn't too bad. We had a very successful dive, was able to figure out what the entanglement was. Basically, there was a lot of debris down there that the power cords were wrapped up around, and that's why they couldn't pull the pump system out. But we got it moved out of the way for them. Uh, got it completely pulled out. They got to put it on the truck. They're going to take it back, get it worked on, and then we may or may not come back for the reinstallation part. We'll just see. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you got any questions on stuff like this, drop it down in the comment section below. Just like our previous video where I showed you my new updated side mount rig, I'm going to be going over my public safety diving and my salvage rig just to let you guys know what I wear when I come out and do jobs like this. But if you like this video, Smash that thumbs up for, button for me. Definitely share it as well. I'm going to go get warmed up because it's really cold out here right now. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.